This picture is sort of an overview of some of the long-term complications of diabetes. So there's an increased incidence of stroke because of the atherosclerosis that can develop in the large vessels supplying the brain. And we've noticed that diabetic retinopathy can occur and cataracts are also more common in diabetes. And unfortunately, we've noticed that atherosclerosis in the coronary arteries means that ischemic heart disease leading to such complications as myocardial infarction is actually the most common cause of death in diabetes. Nephropathy, disease of the kidneys. In the UK, the most common cause of end-stage renal failure is diabetic nephropathy. In many Western countries, it's the leading cause of end-stage renal failure. And we've noticed that there's reduced healing and increased risk of skin infections in any part of the body. Atheroma in the large arteries can lead to peripheral vascular disease. If these vessels here are partly blocked off, you can see there's going to be less blood going to all of the leg. Impotence is a complication of the autonomic neuropathy. Microvascular disease, as we've noticed, is going to affect the eyes, the kidneys, and it can affect the blood, the small nerves, the peripheral nerves in the leg, leading to neuropathy. Ulcers are a possibility. Ischemic ulcers can develop in the leg, and neuropathic ulcers can develop in the feet, as we've noticed under the callus. Not always under callus, but very often under callus leading to areas of infection. If it's bad enough that can lead to frank gangrene where there's total ischemia of the distal tissues and they go black. Peripheral neuropathy we've noted. Vaginal and urinary infections. In actual fact vaginal infections can be a, a presentation of type 1 or type 2 diabetes probably more type 2 diabetes really, because the high levels of sugars in the vaginal secretions mean that fungal infections are particularly likely. But urinary tract infections also more probable. Peripheral neuropathy can affect the arms but mostly affects the legs. And actually we could have, add here the autonomic effects, for example we noted the dysphagia because of the autonomic effect on the esophagus and the gastrophoresis because of the autonomic effect on the stomach. And also the autonomic effects can affect the heart and all of the blood vessels globally, leading to the postural hypotension, which we also noted. So let's have good control of patients with diabetes. Let's keep the blood sugar levels low. Let's correct the other risk factors for macrovascular disease. And let's keep these patients as healthy as we can for as long as we can by establishing and maintaining good glycemic control and treating other risk factors such as hypertension and hyperlipidemia.